Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 287 at scavengerlife.com. So this week we hit our website CPU limit. Yeah, you know, we've been on Blogger all this time, and so now that we're buying actual server space... Yeah. Yeah, we uh, on Friday we hit our daily limits, so the website went offline for, I don't know... It was a little while. Yeah, so we worked with our web guy, and we'll, you were either going to upgrade the uh, server... Look, I don't think it's necessary. I think the problem is, for all you nerds out there, it was a caching issue. And what that means is, when you're loading a page... You're reloading all the graphics and the information that's, like, static, that's, like, always there. And I think that that's unnecessary. So it's, like, the the server needs to just already have that information for you. So I think that it was just refreshing too much. And so our web guy, Eric, actually went in and turned those settings on properly. So I think that's going to fix it. Yep. I think it also, too, just means that we're all getting pretty active. We've now kind of made the changeover. Yeah. And that's good. Uh, you know, there's daily conversations happening, and we definitely enjoy it, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, and we've also been updating the site a little bit. You know, some of you have given us a list of things that you want to change or updated, and we're kind of working through those things. So some of those things are already on there. Yeah. I actually made a form post to document what has been done and what hasn't been done and yeah you know just throw it on there uh as we have a money to pay this guy we will try and work to uh make that happen hashtag tip jar <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week for us uh, we're really yeah. you know putting our head down and getting work done it ryan is busy working on eBay, getting stuff uh, listed, I mean, hundreds of things, and then I'm busy, you know, f- trying to finish this it's, re- it's renovation, so. Right. Uh, so it's like, it's, it's by the end of the week, two things happened. Number one, we felt like we had regular jobs because I barely saw you all week until the evening time. And number two, we were like, oh, thank God it's Friday. I can't wait for the weekend, which is like, (laughs) we never say that. But it's kind of a temporary uh, situation. The cool thing is, what's kept me going is that we're actually going to, it's New York for Christmas time. Yay. Uh, We do this, we've done this the past several years where I have a friend who still uh, lives there, you know. Yeah. back, Back when we lived there. You know, I had a bunch of friends, and you know, a lot of them have kind of drifted off. Kind of, it's like a we did. You uh, moved to cheaper places, right? But I still have a couple friends that are still there, and this one has done very well for himself, and he's got a really nice apartment downtown. He's a fancy TV producer. Yeah, and yeah. he lets us stay in his apartment, and you know, cat sit. We cat sit. So <laughs> we're doing him. Excuse. We're doing him a favor. We're like, here's some food, cat. <laughs> it is important. We're Cats doing him a important. favor, but uh, yeah, I'd known this guy since he was like 18 years yeah. old back in the late 90s. So. Right. Him and I are the same age. Yeah. He, I sell old are... shoes. He produces <laughs> national television programs. Great. So that is fun for us. Uh, you know, that is definitely the scavenger way to travel. You know, the fact that we can. Uh, n- you know, stay somewhere for free really makes a trip like that cheap. And, you yeah. know, people who have heard this, if you know how we do it, we take the train up there. <laughs> we take a backpack full of food and coffee so we don't have to buy much up there in the expensive grocery stores. Exactly. We maybe buy, like, some produce. Yeah. And uh, so it's good. And we just love to be in the uh, a city. We, we We love the country, but that's, like, our urban vacation. Yeah. And that's keeping uh, me going during the week when we're yeah I'm excited down. I'm excited and then we're gonna go up to where my mom lives in Massachusetts for New Year's we're gonna take a bus it's so funny I was like when we were in New York we we knew the day that we had to leave because your friends were coming back and we were like oh we want to go up to it's not Boston exactly it's the South Shore and we're just like what is the cheapest way to get up there and I found a bus ticket. To Providence, actually. How much is it? Uh, it was, I want to say it was like thirty dollars total for two people one way. It was some ridiculous price. Yeah, when we first met, that's when the bus lines started taking off. These little independent. Yeah. They called it the Feng Wa bus because it was. It was a, a chi- the Chinatown because when it started because I 
obviously was in college in Boston, and that was the biggest thing to get to New York was these little Chinatown. Is from Chinatown to Chinatown. Well, it's not a little bus, but it used to be. It used to yeah? just be a van. Oh, really? It used to just be like a fifteen passenger <laughs> van, and and I would hear the stories because I would never do it because I was just like afraid to go by myself or whatever. And the bus, the van would break down all the time, and people would right. be like, "What is this?" But it was like ten dollars or something. Yeah, it's strange because I I would take Greyhounds back when I was in college, and yeah. that was a cheap way to travel. But then these buses came, and they were so much cheaper than Greyhound. Yeah. Where you go between Boston and New York for ten bucks. And there was a there was a time it was a it was like two years ago when we we were in Boston. We had a job in Boston in the summer, and we were like, "Okay, we're going to go to New York." We took a bus from like Cambridge to New York for three dollars each we were just like how how is this even <laughs> real you know so now yeah I mean you know 10 years later there are buses all up and down the east coast yeah. uh, you know mega bus buses. and they got internet and- bolt bus mega bus this one actually is one of the major carriers it's right. it's like Peter Pan yeah oh but, but, or it's Peter Pan slash Bonanza they right. like do, I think so. that's a Greyhound bus, actually. Really? I, mean, I think it's owned by, but I could. Be I don't wrong. think. I don't think so. Anyway, but anyway, nerd, travel, travel nerds. Yeah, I wonder if there are people who is remember what it used to be like to, to ride on the Greyhound Ugh. bus back in the nineties oh uh, or earlier than that. Uh, Not fun. those were. Those were interesting times. I mean, it's definitely well. It's funny because now buses like mostly have Wi Fi. You know, they'll have like four G Wi Fi, which is awesome. Uh, I remember, like, I took a super long bus from Virginia to Boston when we went to summer camp and stuff. And, like, you just have to sit on the bus. Like, there's nothing. You just, like, put your Walkman yep. on, and you're just, like, there's nothing to do except, like, read a book. Yep. That's it. It's crazy. Bus life. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, eBay this week for us. Like I said, is, is Ryan and our helper. I don't know how else to say it. Our worker. Our helper. I like our helper. Uh, our trash elf helper. You guys really, you guys enlisted 281 items. Incredible. And, and so she works four days a week and she works either three or four hours yeah. a day. So she works, you know, what, 15 hours or so? Yeah, it's about 15 hours. So 281 items. I mean, that was crazy. Yeah, you, it's very it's very um, efficient to have someone doing part of the work you know it's like double what i could do and you know we've we've i mentioned our death piles that that were actually i mean we are very close to getting done with all of them i know it you always hate it's when, it's when i say that because like, <laughs> it never feels close but like you guys are now working on one of those like one of the anchors of our death pile like it's one of the foundations of our death pile and that is a big tub of of uh of belts right and you guys got through them all it took us Four days straight. Yep. That's how many belts we had. Right. I mean, so that so that was actually about two hundred and eighty, you know, belts or so. Of, I mean, it was a lot. You know, and uh, what was that process like? Did you? Um, like- it, it was good because once when you're doing one item, it's so easy to get into a flow. You're just like, this is how I take pictures of this. Like she just like is super efficient and fast. So explain again what the uh, system is of how. Okay, the actual process. Work together. So we have an extra iPhone, uh, which is awesome. So it's just be- it's basically like an iPod Touch. I just put it on airplane mode. It's on Wi-Fi. Um, so she will have a pile. What I do is like with the with the bins like that. Jay and I sort through them based on like kind. Like okay, these are cloth belts. These are leather belts. These are black leather belts. You know, you kind of get these. I want to sell in a lot. These I want to sell individually. Actually, all belts were individual. I don't think I sold any in a lot. Um, and, and, and that's one of the, my most favorite parts of the It's process because it's like that game I played as a little kid where you know, have those flashcards and <laughs> yeah. you have to like it's flip like memory, them over and, and <laughs> put the elephants together yeah, and the turtles. Memory. I love that. That's what it's so about. Like, like you have a big yeah. pile, like this snake pile of belts oh my and God. you're like, all right, here's a leather belt. Here's another leather belt. What are similar ones? I mean, and, and not just taking pictures of them, making them similar. That's very important when you're writing titles and like whatever but when you're storing them you really need to make sure they're organized in a way that you can find them like i'm not just going to put 300 belts back in a bin so i had to make sure that we were like okay these are ladies belts these are ladies cloth belts like that's how they have to be organized but so continuing on the process so she will 
what she does now is she she's on a laptop and she makes uh like 50 drafts of belts and what we found was with scheduled listings this is really a pain actually because of vic told us this. vic told us about scheduled listings but the problem is if you do a very specific category like women's belts it makes her do all the item specifics before she schedules a listing so now we just have to be in a generic like um unisex belts category so that she doesn't have to fill that stuff in so that was kind of a weird hiccup that we had so why not just teach her how to fill that in is it it just takes too much time to be honest it just takes too much time Mm. it's like i don't know it just to me it's like when you're on the phone it's just not a fast process so we had to just like find generic categories for her to do scheduled listings that's an aside point but the that's just something we're dealing with. Um, so, yeah. So, she does the drafts. She takes the photos. And then she actually schedules the listing. So, we schedule it, like, a week later. And it says it's going to charge you $0.10. Cents. So, she, so, we're both freaked out. We're like, ah, I'm going to list it. And it says $0.10. Cents. And I said, don't worry. Because once I go into scheduled listing. Because it only charges you if it actually, ex- you know, that 10 days or whatever expires. expires and it lists it. Yeah, yeah. But if I change it, if I go into scheduled listings, it's almost like... They're like drafts. They're like active drafts. I don't know how else to explain it. But so I go in and I change it to um, instead of like schedule my listing for this date, I say list it now. Right. And then I wait for that little fee thing to go away and then I list it. Just to be clear, so eBay, it's not really a draft. I mean, I guess right. it works like a draft. But the nice thing is with drafts, you can only have a certain number of drafts on eBay. You know what? I don't know what the limit is on eBay, but the limit is on the phone. Right. You can only see 30 drafts at a time. So if she gets ahead of me, she can't see her like, you know, past 30 drafts, right. which is so annoying because that means I really have to be sitting there just like cranking them out. So she's doing the scheduled it listing and she takes the photos. Does she write a title or is she She writes a little bit of a title, but I we just haven't gotten to that part where she's like the, the thing about the phone is, like, it's not fun to write titles on the phone, number one. And number two, she she's just like, I don't know, it's a leather belt. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then you're, while she's doing that, you're kind of working in parallel. Yeah. Not not keeping up with her or on the same exact one. But right. But you, you're working through the scheduled uh, listings right. and researching. Yeah, so I'm researching and I'm writing a title and I'm doing the descriptions and just making sure the photos are okay. The photos are usually fine. And then I, you know, change it from schedule listing to list now, and then I then I list it. The great thing about having her as a helper is, you know, I can list a lot of things by myself. Like there was one day that she didn't work on Tuesday, and I listed eighty three items just on my own. But you know, you get distracted during the day. Like for me, I'm like, oh, I have to like run into town, and I have to like put this load of laundry for the farmhouse in, and blah blah blah. It's like. When she's here, it's like I'm working. It like, keeps you focused. It's like those 15 hours that she worked, I worked on eBay. You know, it wasn't uh, like I just let her do it and I didn't list that stuff. That's that's why I like having her and doing the stuff on the phone where it's not like she takes photos and there's a folder and I have to list it later. It's like that stuff get listed gets listed today. Right. So I like that process. Right. So by the end of the day, it's done. It's all done. Like I... And stuff selling, right? You know, like it. And I always laugh when something she listed a couple of days ago sells because I'll be like, okay, th- remember that th- weird belt you listed? It just sold. I mean, I will say, and so again, so people know, so we pay her ten dollars an hour, uh, yeah, which we're thinking of raising if right. we can get her to to actually do, do the whole the process whole herself, where it's slowly. I have to work up to that because right now, honestly, with belts and ties. There are so many that I'm like, we just got to get through this. Like, let's just crank this out. Right. And then we can then I think ease we can up a little bit. Ease up on that. So my question is, you know, up until now, I've been taking the photos. And I still do take photos. Yeah, yeah. Just she's is working. It's with you. And so she's doing it on the phone. Right. So when I take photos, they're on an SD card and we save them. Yeah. So we always have a backup of the right. photos. Now you're taking photos on the phone and directly uploading to eBay. So we don't There's have no backup. backup. Are you ever worried? Like I am. I thought about it yesterday and I was like, this is this is the case for, I guess, those like third party softwares. Uh, you know, Turbo Lister. 
they don't support Turbo Lister anymore, and it's only for a PC, so we couldn't use that. But there's garage sale too, and I feel like there's got to be a way for us to just bulk download all our listings and our photos. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I need a way. I think eBay. Someone, please correct me on this. I think eBay allows you to do a thing called file exchange, where you can just download, do like a data dump of like everything that's listed, which I should do because I'm like, yeah. What if something gets you know, delisted for some reason and I don't have a photo and, you know, that would be bad. So I need to figure out how to do that. Yep. So this week we're working or you guys are working on ties and that's our other, it was this huge bin pack full of ties that I think some of the ties are four years old. There are some very old uh, ones. Because we just never wanted to take pictures of ties. And, you know, we had even talked about just getting uh, rid of them all. But now we're doing that. There's some really expensive ties in there. I mean, I've also been trying to do lots of those just because there's, like, similar ones or, or brands where you're like, okay, there's three exact same ties, only different colors. Okay, great. Like, sell those together. So... Well, that's good. I mean, it's uh, – and the good thing is, is we have been selling enough as we've been going along to pay yeah. our helper. Yeah. So we've already – you know, at least at the bare – it's minimum, we've broken even. But I think we've even made a money already. And yeah, then, yeah, and then so. we have all this inventory that is a listed that will eventually sell. Right, you know? exactly. So – It's good. I'm enjoying it. It's it's a lot of work. I mean, working four hours in a row. <laughs> Sometimes I have to take a break. I mean, she she just keeps going. You know, she's obviously welcome to take a break. But I'm just like, I got to go make some tea. <laughs> like, I got to, like, take a breather here. <laughs> so it's funny. Um, I will say, though, so this week our sales have not been crazy. We've just been having just average sales. Like our sales haven't really gone up or down over the past, I'd say, four or five months. It's just like it's pretty steady. Uh, and, and it's strange because we are a listing more, our sales aren't really exponentially growing. Um, and we've seen that for a long time. And and we've talked about this for a, a while. Like, uh, you know. Yeah. It seems like in the beginning, when did you go from having like 50 items to, you know, 500 items? Yeah. I f- it feels like your sales exponentially grow. Right. When you start hitting like 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000, you know, like it starts to not be that way. Or at right. least it is for us. It hasn't been. Yeah. Um, although, like I said, and we'll talk about our numbers in a bit, um, we are selling a lot of items, but because we're doing the death pile items, they're lower dollar items. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of like we're selling a lot of items. Right. They're just not high dollar high dollar items. items. And you know, and that's what we've always talked about is like trying to find that right balance between stuff that sells, stuff that sells for a good amount of money, you know, it's like Yeah. Uh, but you know the good thing is at least we're feeding our pipeline. You know that's right. you know we always talk about the pipeline and that is like as long as you get it up, it's going to eventually sell. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, I noticed too, and I mentioned this on the its forum. I was just uh, looking at our our our, our ranking or eBay whatever our eBay grade uh, that our defect is rating is zero. Yeah, so what happened? So the defect rating changed? I well, mean, like, their their criteria? Yeah, remember this? It happened maybe six months ago. I guess it was when that new eBay president came in. They switched. President. They changed the eBay its rating where it doesn't take into account certain things. It seems yeah. like the only thing you can really get dinged for is if you cancel an item. And it's your fault. Or if... The buyer opens a case, and if you don't work to figure it out, yeah, and eBay comes in and says you were wrong, right, and it's we we go against you, right. Like those seem to be the only two things that can really hurt you. But I mean, we have zero defect rating. And you know what? Like I think a lot of people argued from the beginning when defect ratings came that like those defects made sense. Sure, okay, right. that makes sense. But everything else. I mean, I'll be hard pressed to remember what everything else was. Right, like if you do want the the uh, sellers who were just doing like drop 
yeah. it's shipping and they have stuff listed. And then when someone buys it, they realize they don't have the item in someone else's warehouse and they have yeah, to yeah. cancel. Like, it, you know, people that get a bad experience, right. you want them to be punished because that hurts all of us. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just interesting because there was at least a year or two when that's, it seemed like we were always talking about that oh, defect, defect rating. rating. Because if you got above a certain amount, people were getting suspended or right. did you lose your top seller a rating right. um so it, it was very like even like the best of the best sellers were having these defect rate ratings and you're just like what more can i do i yeah. provide the best customer service like i can't do anything more and i'm getting like well so i take two things of that just so people have the long view of ebay number one is we all made it through it I mean, yeah sure you know uh it wasn't the end of the, the world. I mean, we made uh, money, you know, yeah. all that. Number two, eBay does change. It's good yeah. to see. I mean, you know, so people complained and, it, you know, eBay's a slow, a moving ship, so things don't happen overnight, but it, it, did, change, it did change, it seems, yeah. And I just wanted to at least acknowledge that because I think sometimes we forget about that. We go from, like, disaster to disaster kind of thinking. Uh, all right, Amazon, you know, we don't talk about this much, but I will say this, you know, it's the fourth quarter for Amazon. It's like yeah. holiday a season, and we definitely aren't having any crazy fourth quarter spikes on our sales, mainly because we don't have, like, toys, Christmas stuff or yeah. toys. I mean, you know, we just have long tail items. Uh, and actually someone emailed us to remind us that we should stop paying the uh, it's professional uh it's seller fee. Which is $40 a month. And that allows you to sell as much as it you want without any additional fee. If we get rid of that, right. then we pay a dollar an item that it's, it's we sell. Now, when we first started on Amazon, we were definitely selling 40 items a month, and it makes right. sense. I mean, some months we're selling like 100 items, right. you know? Um but now that we're definitely not selling 40 items And we're month. not sending anything in. So it's so I don't know if there's any other a reason for us to remain a professional I don't see any seller. reason if, if the numbers don't make sense. But the problem is now I have to figure out how to cancel that. <laughs> they do not make it easy. Like, I'm sure someone will link to it. I really hope they yeah. do on how to cancel it. But... Just Amazon is just this behemoth of just information. Just but like, you know what? It's we say that, but that's what people say about eBay if they've never done it. That's I mean, true. You know, it's like yeah, it's like a system that there's a learning curve, yeah. and then it's once you learn it, then it's like oh yeah, here it is. It's on right. this page here. I mean, yeah. we th we think eBay's easy, but you know, some people yeah. yes, that's true. That's great. so. I think that you know our Amazon FBA experiment is kind of waning. There's kind of a we did it. So we started in February of last year, so it didn't even last a year. It's just like, because it changed so much with that announcement, you know, the yeah. long-term storage yeah. fees. It's just, and also, I mean, there, there's that, although, you know, I've seen people do the uh, numbers, and, you know, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's a big deal if things don't sell after 12 months, because yeah. then they really start hitting right. you with long-term storage fees. But, you know, if, so, if things can sell, it's within 12 months. Yeah. The fee isn't that bad. It's mm -hmm. like right. thirty cents extra a book, you know. Right. If that's what you, you want to say, so it's not that bad. I think it's more about the fun of scavenging for Amazon. Isn't that great? You know, it wasn't fun to begin like, with, in my opinion. Books, I like. I enjoyed looking for books, but like, if I don't have to do that anymore, fine. Like, I just and won't. and I hear people say. Just sell is merchant fulfilled, and that means don't send them into the a warehouse. Just uh, list them on Amazon like right. like we always do. Just then be willing to uh, ship from home, and we're looking into that. I mean, I just I don't. It's like I don't want to do it. No. I, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Like <laughs> we did merchant fulfilled on Amazon forever, and the sales were so slow. And if I cross posted to eBay, I would always forget to end it on Amazon. I'm like. It's not yeah. worth it. It's not worth the time for me. Yeah. Look, I need to concentrate on eBay at the yeah. end. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's my answer. End of the meeting. Yeah. Um, okay, just some kind of random things before we talk about the uh, numbers. So I saw this link on Boing Boing um, where there was this, this guy in, um, I forget what state he's in, 
where he's like recreated like the perfect 1960s apartment just because he thinks it's cool style so i'll link to it on the blog and i just want to link to things like this because there are people out there who love weird vintage stuff all kinds of stuff housewares you know bath stuff and and those are the people who are looking for weird quirky things you know like it, it is funny having a helper because sometimes i'll hand her like the weirdest stuff and we both kind of look at it and we're like, who would buy this? And then it will sell. So you're like, okay. But, I mean, let's be clear. I mean, those of you that have been selling eBay a long time understand this. But maybe for people that are new, you know, it's not really that big of a mystery. If you think about it's just about it's nostalgia. Yeah. You know, like, you know, people get to a certain point in their life and their life is pretty calm and they have a job and, you know, they're they're kind of stable and so what they're looking for are feelings, really. Like, right. I want to remember what I used to be like as a kid. Or right. they're either recreating their childhood or they're, or they're rebuilding a childhood that maybe they didn't have. Right. You know, like, I wish I had had all these toys, so I'm going to make, yeah. make the world around me the way I wish it was. Right, And exactly. that's a valuable yeah. experience. Or, you know? I mean, also, like, this guy's, like, 25 years old, so he did not experience the 60s at all for him he's like i love the style this like colorful kitschy kind of atomic era mid-century like all these you know mixtures of of ideas you know coming together and he's like i just love the way it looks it looks so great and and so you know to there's nostalgia of your own childhood and there's nostalgia of times that you never lived right. also. Well, so. I mean, I can speak from my own personal experience. You know, we're uh, renovating a house. Yeah. And we've done another one. And, you know, they're, they're farmhouses. They're, you know, they're older houses. And right. we And we try to decorate them in a certain way. You yeah. Know? Not in a way that I grew up, but just in I'm buying, I'm looking for things that are well-made. Right. That seems special, yeah. you know, things that, uh, you know, stores are trying to recreate these, like, you know, it's restoration hardware. Right, or, and, and uh, Ikea. It's rejuvenation, like yeah. they're trying to recreate kind of fake advantage. But what's fun for me is to go on eBay yeah. and look for the real, the real deal, vintage. you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, architectural salvage. Yeah, and also, like, what's interesting, too, about buying vintage stuff on eBay is it's oftentimes cheaper, like to get the original lamp or you know piece of furniture is sometimes cheaper than buying the reproductions it could be a lot of times right. it is so right because because those companies will charge you more for the reproduction fake vintage because you don't want to spend time searching yeah for, yeah you know, it's like it's already uh, done for yeah. for you and it's brand new right but that's but and and that's also and I get that too it's part of the fun of the treasure hunt on right. eBay, you know, where I'm willing to take the time to try and find that thing that I want. You yeah, know? and to find the exact one. That and so sense. I so I depend on sellers like you to go out and find that stuff and take right. the time to uh, list it. And then our, our eyes will meet and then we buy it. <laughs> okay, uh, and then it was – this is kind of a random thing, but we've talked about it before – End of the year. Yes. We always uh, look at our bills, and we try and make sure we haven't started spending more on certain things at the end of the year. Like, it, you know, because that, that can happen. Like, a little bill start popping up that right. it, you took on that, is, that it, you didn't expect, right. or just how can we save more money? Right. That's really the thing. And so it, you looked at our internet bill. Right. So our internet bill... We live in a rural area, okay? So our internet, in this part of town, look, in town proper, you can get pretty fast internet from what I've been talking to people about. But where we live, we live five miles outside of town. You just cannot get good speeds. I I produced a video for uh, like a nonprofit group in town and I uploaded it. And it took me 15 hours to upload it. And I'm just like, this is completely unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, we're, 
we're happy in the fact that it's fast enough for us to do eBay and regular internet, but right. not, you know. But just anything beyond that is just undoable. So I called the company and I asked for a discount. Um, and they give you this like customer loyalty discount because we've been with them for years and years now. And what was your uh, reason for that? I mean, if you were just calling out of the blue, just like, give me a discount. Um, <laughs> well, the thing is, we've had the discount for right. several years because we called a few years ago. So they just keep continuing it when you call, only when right. you call. So we have two accounts, one for our house, one for the farmhouse rental. And they, they're willing to take $10 off each account. So it's like... A, just for asking. Just for asking, right? right? But then I was kind of like, you know what? That means I'm still paying $90 a month uh, total for two houses for really bad internet. Like, like unacceptably bad internet. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere close to the speeds. So I was like, I actually want more off. And she was like, well... I can't give it to you right now because I just initiated the discount. So it's like your your status is pending. She said, call back in a couple days and ask for more off, which I was like, what? Really? Okay, I definitely will. So like two days later, I contacted them again. Actually, it wasn't even over the phone. It was over chat, which is really helpful because then I can be listing on eBay while I'm chatting with them. And they lowered my bill to $25 per account, so, per house. So we went from $90 to $50 a month for two properties. And so almost in half, j- just, almost because in half. You, just because you asked. But just because I was like, <laughs> this is unacceptably slow. I just, mm-hmm. like, I can barely do anything. And my my because we're in a rural area, I don't know if in urban areas you can even get away with arguing this at all because your speeds might be incredible. Uh, But for me, I'm just like, it's 2016. I live in the United States. Uh, I should be able to have internet that's acceptable to me being able to do stuff online. And it's not. And I think they agreed with me. Clearly, they cut my bill in half. So I have it on my calendar to call again next year. (laughs) So we're going to save $480 this year just because you're willing to, to make a phone call and then a chat. Yeah. A session, that's it's amazing. Ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, we just put that out there. Other people may uh, know about this. Sometimes it, you just have to call and ask. Yep. You know, and I think even if you're in a city, I think you could just call and say, "I'm thinking about switching." You know, yeah. to the next competitor. Right. You know, what can you do to yep. keep me here? Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's basically like the the department they forwarded me to was the customer retention department because. Right. Which is exactly what it means, is they want to keep you as a customer. The uh, last full-time job I worked at, I had one shift where I would work till 11 o'clock at night. You yeah. know, it was me and one other guy. And I remember it would be slow, and he would sit on the phone every month, and he would he would spend hour or two talking to his phone company, you know, his, his, yeah, cell, cell, phone his cell phone company. And he would just like try and see what he could get out of him he would get free phones he yep. would get uh credit on his bill yeah. just because i mean <laughs> i mean i would asks. hear him it would make me embarrassed because he would just be like no i need more i need I'd be just like, <laughs> but he would he didn't care he, didn't get it. he would just yeah, keep doing yeah. it and they would mail him phones so That's so crazy there's something about you know asking yeah uh, okay let's talk about our numbers this week so in our two ebay stores uh, we made a total of sixteen hundred dollars, which you know we're glad to have. Yeah, that's as money as we need. But man, our sales are just not it's skyrocketing. Not high, that and that's happens. and that's with we have oh my god between two stores we have fifty eight hundred items that are listed. It's like okay, I. I'm That's gonna, crazy. I mean, that actually surprises me how many items I we mean, have. so here's the thing, though. Like, this is why I've been, like, cranky all week. I'm right. just, like, I'm listing like crazy. Yep. We have so many things. We almost have 6,000 items, and we can barely make $2,000. I'm right. just, like, what see, is the problem? Okay, 
let's see, like, it's that equation. So we sold 55 items, which is... 57. Sorry, 57 items, which is, you know, a lot of a volume. Yeah. I mean, we sold almost 10 items a day. But the thing is, our average sales price was about $27, you know? Yeah. Like, we're not even hitting that $30 mark, you know? We're, yeah. We're selling a lot of, like, like just to, like, just to, to today even, we sold, you know, uh, like... A couple of shirts, you know, one for fourteen dollars, one for twenty-two dollars. You know, it's, it's yeah. like that's 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 the deal. You know. Yeah, you just. I guess I would hope that the volume would go high enough. Right. Like, I just I feel like. Well, I mean, I think you know what, I I, I try and think what we would tell somebody else yeah. who is you know emailing us or calling in and complaining about the, the same thing, and it's my thing. I would say to to them, and this the thing I say to us is, I mean, it will sell, you know. Like so, maybe this wasn't the week we had crazy sales. Those sales do happen. Yeah. I you know we never know when someone wants what we have. All we can do is just keep Put it up. putting stuff in that pipeline. And we talked about this is last week. If we want to change the equation. We need to spend more time scavenging yeah. for higher dollar items. Right. You know? So I think as long as we're just working on these death piles of lower dollar items, that's the stuff that's going to sell. But you I know? want more of that stuff to sell. All right. Yeah. I mean, I will say when I hear about like amazing taste or 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 uh, Ed Bryan who doesn't really show up on the forum anymore, but he sells a lot of clothes. You know, they yeah. say they make. Three, four, five thousand dollars a week just selling, oftentimes fairly low dollar item yeah. clothes, but they're selling like crazy of amounts it. of it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know why? It's just... Why it, we're not selling a hundred items? You know, right? Why aren't we selling double that? But you know, you got to be grateful for what you got. Um, we don't really have a lot to say about things we sold this week that were really special or exciting it was just it was all really bread and butter stuff although it was interesting we sold a bunch of mugs it like was weird coffee cups yeah i don't know if it's like people are giving those for presents or something but it was like sometimes it was like two or three mugs in a row for sales i'm like great <laughs> it's awesome which is great because we have a ton of mugs and you know i mean it it wasn't like 20 mugs it was yeah you know, it was like five mugs but if you think about it you know if you're like us is you don't really pay anything for those mugs but they can sell for 20 30 dollars yeah, you know depending. uh which is just incredible yeah profit so uh okay customer issues um so this week we had one of those buyers that we all have who just asked a million questions and now part of it wasn't so much a, a million questions about the item she was trying to combine shipping between three pairs of overalls. Right. She, I wanted three pairs of overalls that were different at listings. She's brand new to eBay, so it's kind of a difficult transaction to explain to someone brand new. Yeah. So we tried to explain it. You know, I was like, okay, I, I want – and what was weird is everything I asked her to do, she did. And it still wouldn't – she still wouldn't go through well, with it. Her concern, it was this, was buying three different items and getting charged to a ship right. each one. And so I understand her its concern. So we were just like, well, we'll just make an offer on each one. Right. We'll accept. Then we'll send you an invoice with, with combined, combined shipping. shipping. And she didn't believe us. She basically. literally yeah. did not believe us. I even told her how much I would charge her because <laughs> I'm like, it's three pairs. They're right. going to be about this Wait, if you're right. in New York, like it says on your thing, it's going to be this much for shipping. Still wouldn't believe it. She said, yeah. I'm going to call eBay to make sure. Well, and she wanted to call us. She was like, she can I get your phone us. number? So and I we were call busy. You. This was one of these busy days yeah. where there was just a lot going on. We were just like, sorry, no. And then the weird thing is, so the next day, we don't hear anything. The next day, she she accepts the offer on one pair and pays for it right away. And stupid me, I message her and I'm like, did you want the other two? Because now I have to figure out how to combine shipping because you already paid. And she was like, of course I do. And then nothing happened, whatever. Finally, I was just like, this woman's like, I don't know what her deal is. So I shipped her the, the overalls. 
guess what happened? The day she got it, she opened a return case. Right. These don't fit. We called it from the second we heard from her. You know, the the first message, we were like, this, she's going to return these. Great thing is, if she's super new to eBay, I doubt she's going to be able to figure out how to print a label and send it back. So I am closing that case as fast as I can on day five. Yeah, I mean, you know, if she sends it back, we'll take yeah, the sure. return. If she mails she it said, back, no problem. She said it was, I mean, her, I mean, I don't know if it's yeah, her fault. Yeah, she said it didn't but... fit. So she's going to pay for shipping and right. she's going to pay a restocking it's fee, just, which is fine by me. It's just, you know, goes to show that when someone is having a lot of trouble or being very particular, it, it often does I mean, those people, I guess, shouldn't really buy on the internet. They should buy things in, in person. person. Um, now, do you think, let's not talk about her specifically, but that a situation of wanting to buy multiple things. So is that an eBay problem? Like, can eBay make that easier for people to buy They absolutely items? should. Mm. I don't know how. There are times where if, say you put those three things in your cart, there is a link that says request request total from buyer. Mm. But you can only have that if you have like these combined shipping rules on every single item mm. where you're like if you buy one item, you can buy the second one with, you know, $1 shipping. But the problem with a store like ours is that doesn't make sense because we don't sell widgets. Because, we sell like right, because items jackets are all, and chairs. All and, different Yeah, you're just like, I, sizes, I can't yeah. have that rule. Right. But I wish eBay made it so that somehow there was a way to override shipping rules. Like right now there's a thing where when you get a message from someone, it says... Um, send an offer with this message. So you're overriding a rule that says you don't have make an offer on an item. So there's got to be a way for them to override a rule of combined shipping. I don't know how they would do it. That's their problem to figure out. But right now, basically, we, we missed out on like a $75 sale, $75 plus, because this woman was like, she can't figure it out. And we couldn't make her figure it out. And because she's new... Us kind of explaining how to hack the eBay yeah. system does sound kind of sketchy because you're you know you're explaining it in a way where it seems too complicated. Yeah, and so she's like, "Wait a second, that's kind of funny." But you know? I mean, if she called eBay, they would have explained right. that that's fine. But but it just yes, it's one of the things that that bothers me the most about eBay is that they don't give sellers a way to make a bundle for someone and make it make sense all around uh it is it's like like on amazon the great thing about amazon when you have like a prime membership you just put stuff in your cart and you just buy it there's no questions i mean yeah so it's just like i and granted all that stuff's coming from a warehouse <laughs> But I just I wish that they could figure it out because I feel like a lot of us lose sales because buyers get confused. And I understand. And you know what? A lot of times when – and me as a buyer, I've had other sellers be like, okay, just buy everything and I'll refund you via PayPal. And I'm like, I don't want to do that because it takes the person forever to refund through PayPal or you know, you have to bug them to get your refund. And it's just like – it's annoying because you're putting money out the door waiting for a refund and, and it shouldn't be like that. So yeah, that was a pain. The other customer issue we had was somebody, and this is the thing I tell people all the time, someone opened a return case and said an item didn't fit. They never shipped it. They never printed a label. They just sat on it. And then five days later, I called eBay and I had the case closed. So... I don't know. There doesn't seem like they're going to return it. And so basically the money, because eBay holds that money uh, through PayPal, they like put a hold on it. And I'm like, okay. So, so, back. so again, we've talked about this before and I forgot how we found out about this, this rule. But if yeah. someone opens a, a return case, once that case is open, they have five business, business days, days to actually print a label and return it and return it. And, 
and and if they haven't printed a label with within those five days, right. it, you can call and close that. It's case. not even just printed a label. They could open the case, print the label, but if there's no tracking, uh-huh. like like they're not going to charge you for a label um, if there's no tracking. Okay. So if they print a label and have that label and that item just sitting on their desk for five business days. They'll close the case. So it's so within five business days, you have to print a label and, and get it in the mail. It has to. The and tracking if there has isn't to a start. tracking. Exactly. So even though they have thirty days to return it, they have to once they start the its process, stick it in the mail five, five business, business days. days, which is so, great for sellers yeah. because you're like, they didn't mail it back, close the but case. But if you don't call. Then it just stays open yeah, you have to to for call. 30 days or whatever. Yeah, you know. it just stays open for, I think it's more than 30. 30, you know what it is? It's 30 business days. So that's like 45, 45 days. calendar days. Yeah, yeah so, so that's where the confusion comes in. Right. Um, so that is my thing for people who are having trouble with these buyers who are like, I, no, no. I'm just saying because because we get it on the forum and in the comments all the time where they're like, this buyer is really saying I did something wrong. Look, if they don't return it in five days, get the case closed. That's what you can do. That's the power you have right now. Okay. In the forum this week, we learned some things which were interesting. I'm going to just talk about some of them. Uh, it's Nancy was saying that she was... She sold, I guess, some it's Christmas light bulbs. You yeah. Know, very fragile. And she was using paper, you know. Like tissue paper. To right. uh, wrap them up. And she ran out of that. And she realized she had all these uh, it's sewing patterns. That like were, old sewing patterns. Uh, useless, I guess, ones that she knows nobody wants. And she was uh, using those. Yeah, because as- <laughs> uh, the sewing patterns, if you've never sewed anything, are made out of like a tissue paper. So it's so awesome that she was using those. So how does that work? With you put the tissue paper on a piece of cloth and like draw on it or something? No. Or? So like, so you take the tissue. I've actually never sewn with a pattern, but I've seen my mom do it. You cut out the pattern or whatever, and then you you pin that to like um, fabric, and then you like cut out the uh, okay. pattern. Huh. Yeah, you like pin it. Either you pin it or you like use a piece of it's like fabric chalk or mm-hmm. it's just chalk. And you like, you know, trace wow. it. It's like tracing paper. That's what I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. how you do it. So crazy. Yeah. I wonder if 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 a lot of people still do that. There are some people who still sew. Um, it's retro WV treasures. Yes. It was interesting. He, I guess, it was during the middle of the work day. He works full time. He's got a big family. Yep. And he just posted, I guess, uh, just a vent that he was. Just overwhelmed by the urge to quit his job because of the its bureaucracy of his job. And I totally yep. know how that is when it's so hard to get anything done at a job because of politics, internal, internal politics, politics, and just systems, office drama. one person holding up a good idea. And, sure. you know, there's, there's no easy answer. For, I mean, I mean, what he was voicing is a quandary of all of us have who have wanted to go a full time. Yeah. You don't make a full time income on eBay until you put in full time hours. Right. But you can't put down full time hours if you have a full time job. Right. So you have to like make that choice to like take that leap, yeah. you know, where there's gonna be that gap between your full time income from a job and you know that gap of then a working full time for it yourself, and finally is making enough. And all of us who have gone full time have to solve that puzzle. You know, for some of us like us, yeah, it's kind of like we didn't really have a choice. It's like yeah. we didn't have full time jobs because right. we were working for ourselves, or the economy was bad, or you lost your job, yeah. and so you kind of get forced into it. Yeah, other people do things like they save up as much as they can quit their job and then they have a cash you know a a, a nest egg that can hold them over until they uh, make it you know right so you know there's ways to do it it's tough you know and there's always the fear too of if i quit this full-time job with right. all the headaches and commute and all that but it's at least it's stable you know like do i want to jump into Especially if, like, I have kids and yep. responsibilities, you know. But we always say it's just an illusion of stability. Yeah. 
You can get fired at any time. Yeah, that's right. And we've seen that happen. You know, people yeah. are like, I'm staying because of my paycheck. And then they're just like, oh, they just like eliminated my whole department. Right. That, yeah. Yeah. That's, that happens, yep. you know. So. Uh, and also Mike from Atlanta, he posted about new shipping policies that eBay has announced. Uh, I don't know how it's new these are, but it was new to us. Um, and we'll put a link to it on the blog. What was interesting for us is that they're actually a formally introducing freight yes. into an option that you can put on items. I got look. I opened the page and I have not read through it, but I have to just figure out like how do you add it to your listing? Like how do you tell them how much it is? And so I I read it, and so the good thing for us is we like to sell furniture, and we always yes. do a local pickup because we don't want to have to ship it. And we've looked into doing freight and. Uh, it just was never a fun process because of whatever. And so yeah. what eBay has done is they have, it looks like they've uh, partnered with uh, FedEx. It's FedEx who does freight, and they explain to you what you need to do. And okay. so that's great to put an option on there. And then what we need to do is just learn how to package the item in a way that they can handle, whether yeah. it be putting it on a pallet or wrapping it up you know like a chair yeah um, so that's pretty cool actually it's very cool I, it's, it's i feel like it's a long time coming you know i need to figure out how to do it and what we need to do because i would love to offer it because a lot of people on pieces of furniture are like how much will this cost to ship to you know alabama and you're like i have no idea <laughs> that's why it's local pickup yeah i mean t t to me the hard part has always been how to package it you know right so if you have a chair or a table or a big barber chair or something you yeah. know like how do we get it onto the truck right you know how do we get like, it to them we have these like i mean they aren't heavy they're just too big to put in a box it's like these like mid-century chairs yeah they're like plastic and chrome and it's like we don't put that on a pallet so right do so what you do you do put it in car do it you put it in a big cardboard box do you yeah. wrap it up in that plastic like how do you so that's one thing that i hope ebay helps us figure out yeah. or fedex does it's fiberglass fiberglass sure. and we had started this on the forum where we had we have a uh, a section called uh, it's Meetup, although I'm going to change the title of that so it's more clear. Yeah. Where I was like, well, and I started a thread. Well, if you want to offer your services to a list for somebody else, yep. just post here and maybe people can, yeah. you know, talk to each other. You know, or, or people who uh, want to help her, they can say, I live in this town, I want to help her, and I'll pay you. Right. And so Eli in Portland... He says he's offering to his services to clean, photograph, and list for somebody. There's got to be someone in the Portland area that needs help. And just to be clear, we have nothing to do with this. This is more like a Craigslist thing. I mean, we're just yeah, offering a, a connection. place to connect. Yeah, yeah. You know, you guys have to be smart and trust each other and figure each other out. You yeah. Know, buyer, it's beware kind of thing. But I think that would be interesting because there are people who maybe – are scavengers yeah. who don't want to run their own stores but might want to or they work. want to run a store that's small and part time and they who knows and they know enough to help someone else yeah. so I'm going to put a link to his post just so you can see it's what he wrote but we're actually going to update that a uh, forum category so it's more clear as to what yeah what you it, can do you there. can do yeah that's cool and I do want to say in the meetup section, if you guys want to meet in person and just hang out and meet each other, that's a great section yeah. to do it. Go check it out. See if there's someone in your area. I know there are three people who are going to meet up, or at least three people who are going to meet up in uh, it's D.C. D.C., Northern Virginia yeah. area. So uh, that's cool. You know. Yeah, it's like, why not meet up, talk about I was even seeing uh, one guy was like, hey, there's this big uh, church sale happening on a certain... Yeah. Saturday, which is interesting because, you know, there's this idea that we're all trying to, like, hide information from each other, but, you know. <laughs> well, uh, what's funny about going scavenging with other scavengers is you'll all be looking for different things. Right. I mean, you won't all be – you might look at something and be like, oh, man, I wish I would have yeah. seen that. But 
and, generally. And if you're real scavengers, you in in the same area, I bet you guys bump into each other even <laughs> whether you know it you or don't, not. It's know it, so it, it, you might as well <laughs> know each other. Yeah, you know? exactly. What does our coming week look like, Jay? I know that you hate this. <laughs> so, I mean, this has nothing to do with, like, eBay or scavenging, but my week continues to be doing the uh, uh, renovation on this house. So, yep. uh, You're the have, general contractor. Yeah, so we have these guys. I mean, that's also one of the stresses we have right now is money because we're really spending uh, its money is renovating this place. And, you yeah. know, we depend on eBay income to help us. To fund this, so uh, you yeah. Know. So when it's so low when like so this. when we're spending more than we're bringing in, it gets a little stressful. But yeah. we're doing okay. We saved uh, it's money up to do this, and so yeah, you know, I we, we have four guys who are working for us, and I'm just uh, maximizing their skill. You're very good in their energy. By I stack projects on top of each other, so everyone knows what needs to happen. Yep. and they're doing a good job. Yep. And we're trying to kind of get to a certain ending point by the time we go to it's New York, which is yeah. the 20th. So we have a couple more weeks and yeah. we're trying to get as much done. So the house is watertight and windows and doors yep. and framed up and everything's is ready for the trades. Yeah, as exactly. they say. Uh, and you'll be doing ties. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. Ties. I mean, that's basically it. Ties. And if we get through with ties, it's all just figure out something else oh i've got a whole a, a list of stuff here yeah there's just <laughs> there's a mountain of stuff in our house that can get done so yeah. it's uh, not a problem okay so let's answer any questions that people either called or emailed us this week okay you can always call us on our voicemail not line it is 540-407-8486 you have three minutes to leave a message it's len with the potter's pickers i just wanted to call and let you know it in no way offends me that you guys talk politics or that you have an opposite uh, a political view than I do as a liberal. I myself being a conservative who did not vote for Trump because I like the Constitution. Uh, however, I kind of sniffed out your uh, your liberalism way back when I heard you guys singing the praises of Obamacare, which happens to be the factor that's keeping me from going full time. So, although we disagree. I still love you guys. I still appreciate all the help that you've given me in getting my business off the ground, and I will not stop listening because of your political beliefs. God bless you guys. Thanks, Lynn, uh, the Potter's Picker. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, you know, we all have, we can all have different political opinions and still come together and help each other. Uh, you know, that's just how it works, and you know, we all have that time to vote, and that's how things can change. And uh, then life just goes on. And we do appreciate the emails. That people sent us is it it's as weak as well uh, whether they agree it's with us or not we had people just say you know it is politics is a part of life and sometimes we got to talk about it and we're a strong enough community to, to do that absolutely hey Jay and Ryan and fellow uh, scavengers I thought I'd tell you about a transaction I had recently I sold an item on eBay for a couple hundred bucks the buyer messaged me and uh, said he couldn't use his PayPal account wanted to know if there was some other way he could pay for the item. He claimed his uh, PayPal account was hacked and he wasn't supposed to use it. <clears throat> and uh, he, he wanted to pay with a credit card. I told him I couldn't accept credit cards. And he kept uh, messaging me, wanting me to take a money order. And I said, well, let me contact eBay. <clears throat> so I called eBay, told him my story, and he, they said I should contact PayPal. So I called PayPal and said that uh, the person said they could uh, pay with a credit card, but I didn't have any way of accepting that, and that they couldn't, they didn't want to use their PayPal account because it was hacked. The uh, person told me, and I didn't know this, that uh, it's possible for me to go into my PayPal account and send the buyer an invoice, and apparently they can pay with a credit card that way without using their PayPal account. I wasn't aware of that. So I contacted the buyer. Well, it turns out I think this guy was a scammer. He was trying to send me a money order, and he was going to try to rip me off. So uh, that deal fell through, but I did learn something, so I thought I'd pass it along. Thanks. So the beautiful thing about PayPal and eBay is people should be able to use their credit cards no matter what. Um, like when I buy stuff on eBay, I always see a choice that's like, 
you can use your PayPal balance or you can use a credit card and you can like click through those options. Now, I don't know if that depends on the uh, PayPal account that you have as a seller. Like if you just have a personal PayPal account that's not a business account, maybe that's why. But if you're selling full time full time or even more than a hobby. If you're basically listening to this podcast, you should have a business PayPal account so that people can pay with a with a credit card. You don't want to lose those sales because someone, you know, doesn't, you know, want to pay a certain way. That being said, I have accepted money orders for things in the past, but it's like been like two things. Um, and people actually did send the money orders. Uh, and how I did it was I let them buy it without paying immediately, obviously, because they didn't want to use PayPal. And then I was like, you know, ship, sh- sh- you know, mail the a USPS money order to this address as soon as possible because I will be opening an unpaid item case if I do not get it. Um, and and it worked. And if it if they didn't send one. Um, I would open an unpaid item case. And, you know, it really depends on the item. If it's a high dollar item and you really want to make that sale, I get it. But honestly, like at this point, we're generally just like, nope, we do PayPal or you pay by credit card. Like, that's just how the internet works right now. Yeah, and for all the years and, you know, thousands and thousands of items we've sold on eBay, I mean, we really have not had any problems with scammers. Yeah, I mean, no. every so often we'll have a, an item sell and then we get a message from eBay. This item was canceled because, you know, of unauthorized uh, yeah. use of the account. But that really has nothing to do with us. I mean, that's yeah, I mean just, we didn't do anything. That happened someplace else. But that's so rare. So rare. I, I mean, I really think that that's why these kind of like a middlemen between us and the buyer are good. Whether right. it be us a renting our home on Airbnb or selling something on eBay, these uh, middle men companies yeah. protect both the people who are, are renting and buying from us, but also protect us who are actually doing the transaction. Yeah, so it's too bad that that fell through and you think that guy was a scammer, but I think in general, you, you're able to you know have some, some seller protection there. Hi, this is Jessica. Um, I have a question about returns. Uh, I received a return request today. Um, the gentleman stated that it was not what he had sought, and he but he marked the item as not as described. Not that there was something wrong with it. He just took it out, said, oh, this isn't what I thought, and put it back in the bag. Um, I called eBay, and they told me that I had to accept the return no matter what. But in five days, if he doesn't get it back to me, I can close the case. Well, I already knew that from you guys, so, um, you know, I was aware of that. But my concern is it's made me pay for the shipping charges, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get my restocking fee back because of this. Um, I do plan on calling eBay when um, when I do receive the item back. I, You know, I, I'm kind of nervous. I don't want to do the wrong thing. You know, I really like my great feedback. Um, is there anything you can suggest uh, that I that I do or how I handle it? Um, or did I, or did I handle it wrong because I already accepted the returns? Thanks a lot. I love your show. Keep up the good work. Bye. Yeah, so there's a new program that some sellers are in, which is like a returns, whatever, like beta program. And the great thing about it is when this exact thing happens, when your buyer says, this item didn't fit or, you know, buyer's remorse problem, I didn't like it, but then they mark it as item not as described so they don't have to pay for any of the fees. eBay is through this program right now, and hopefully this will be more widespread for everybody soon. You can actually say on the return case like buyers misusing returns, like see the case because the case is showing the person's like, doesn't fit item not as described. Um, So you're able to like usurp that case so that it's the proper way. That being said, I've never done that yet because I I, like didn't believe that it was true. (laughs) And not everyone is a part of that program yet. 
So they're right that you do have to accept the return or else um, eBay will like open a case against you. But so what you should do is, yeah, when you get the item back, if you get the item back, you should call eBay and be like, what do I do? This is clearly buyer's remorse. I don't want to have to pay for the, you know, all the shipping and not get my restocking fee. I don't know what they're going to do um, to fix it. I hope that they, maybe they'll make you refund just the price minus 20% through PayPal and then close the case. I'm not sure. Um, but I do agree that people misuse returns either on purpose or by by accident. I've had several just people be like, I didn't know which drop down menu to choose. You know, they admit their mistake. And it's it's tough because then you have to like refund through PayPal and then cancel the transaction. Like it's not fun. Um, and then call eBay to close the return case, et cetera, et cetera. So when you call them, you should call back and tell us what happened because I would love to know. Hey y'all, this is Heather. I am calling from outside Richmond, Virginia. And I am calling, I believe it was Derek from Utah a couple weeks ago called um, because his photos had disappeared from his um, saved listings, and he was really bumming about it. And I wanted to give some encouragement that this is not the only person that this has happened to because it also happened to me. I started selling in August of 2015, and in November I was rolling along, um, doing well, um, and I had snapped photos um, into some um, listing drafts, which is what you know I had been taught to do and seemed to be working well, um, until I went back a few days later and my photos had disappeared. And when I contacted eBay about it, um, they said that there was nothing they could do about it, just take the photos again. So I, at that time, I think it was about 15 listings, um, but as a mom who also babysits. Um, I do it in my spare time, so that actually <laughs> was a big inconvenience for me. I was pretty irritated. Not only that, I had a uh, listing that had the photos in it. Um, this was a separate occasion a few weeks afterwards. It had the photos in it. It was a green sweater, and um, I made some adjustments on the measurements, uh, hit list, and when I listed it, it went live, but it said, no photo added. Seller will be adding photo soon. <laughs> Yet when I hit list, it was there. Once again, I contacted eBay and um, there was nothing that they could do. I actually, after I take photos of my clothing, I immediately fold them, put them in plastic bags, and then put them in Rubbermaid bins. So I had to go back and find all the clothing, um, you know, put them in the shower, in the in the bathroom to steam them because I wasn't going to wash them again. They were all wrinkly. Um, in order to snap the photos again. It was a huge inconvenience. So the workaround that I came up with is I take the photos with my iPhone and I just keep them on my iPhone. And then when I'm ready to go ahead and list, I sit down at the computer. I mean, you can do it on your iPhone too, but I prefer typing on a computer. Um, I go ahead, I create the listing, put everything in there that I need with the listing details, and then I add the photos afterwards from my phone. So that has saved me the headache of my photos disappearing. It's pretty easy, and um, I actually upgraded to a bigger memory iPhone because my photos were filling up my entire phone um, because I like to do as many as I can all at once, and then I go ahead and add them afterwards. So hopefully, you know, this doesn't happen to anybody else. Hopefully this can prevent something um, similar happening to another one of your listeners. But I feel Derek's pain. And I wanted to tell him my workaround. So, Right. So that is a very smart workaround. My issue with that is exactly what you said. I mean, we are listing like 60 things a day. There's just so many photos. Like, I don't want to store those photos and then delete those photos. It's like, that's why I love the eBay app is because it's just, you know, no photos are stored. It just gets put on eBay server. I love that. But if stuff is disappearing, like you said, that is unacceptable and, like, horrible and annoying. Um, I wonder if it's different if you use the scheduled listings uh, method, where instead of saving drafts, you're, you know, when you make a draft, say it's a scheduled listing, go in, make it, in quotes, a, you know, almost live listing. 
so that, I don't know, maybe that means eBay uploads the photos differently. I'm not sure. I've never had that problem where photos disappeared, but apparently it is a problem if several people are having the problem. Hopefully eBay works through it and fixes that. Yeah, I mean, I think some of this happens because, you know, they're always, we've talked about this is before, it's you can tell that they're always doing, you know, they go through these periods where they're doing changes to the right. website, where it's, you can see things changing on the page as you're a listing. Yeah. And they're probably, you know, changing code behind the scenes, and then it's just like, all these gears are a moving, and sometimes a one of us gets kind of stuck in those gears. I've, I've seen that before, And yeah. it's unfortunate, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I just, I really don't like... The idea of just having to save all those pictures on my phone. It's like, just yeah. get it done. But, you know, at the same time, it's a billion-dollar company. And if they want to, you know, keep growing or it remain a solid, profitable business, they have to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, that's, like huge... that's what we're all paying them, you know, 10% of our right. profits for. Exactly. Know? Okay, you can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discussed and to join the conversation on the forums. You can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video so you can see what kind of stuff is selling on eBay and how much it's sold for. Right now, we are featuring Stephen Schultz and all his cool sales. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube so you always get the latest episode. You can listen to our other podcast where we talk about our vacation rental business on shampooandbooze.com. And if you want, you can rent our vacation farmhouse. It has a lot of opening during the winter. Okay, we are ending this podcast in three, two, one. Bye.